Hi everyone, welcome back to the Power of a Hobby. I'm your host Don Fenton and today I have a, another guest with me. Good morning Naomi, how are we? Morning Dom, I'm good thank you, how are you? Yeah, very good and thank you for uh, taking the time out of your busy day to appear on the podcast with me this morning. You're welcome, I'm looking forward to it. So Naomi, for those who don't know who you are and what you do, why don't you just introduce yourself to the, to the audience? So I'm Naomi Watkins, Ligwajinska. I'm a psychotherapist and growth coach, and I run a community interest company that's based in the UK. Amazing. And actually, we've known each other a little while now. Mm-hmm. And actually, as soon as you started talking, I saw you in one of some of your groups, and we started talking about hobbies. And mm-hmm. I was like, actually, you know what? This is someone perfect, because actually you believe in hobbies as much as I do. Perfect to come on. So... The first question that I ask everyone on the podcast, what does the power of a hobby mean to you? So much. So obviously being from a psychotherapist background, like a hobby really helps your mental health. Um, To me personally, it's something that gives me a lot of joy. It helps me to switch off. I don't think about anything else when I'm doing my hobby. I just focus on that. Brilliant. And when we were just talking off air, you know, when we actually started the podcast, it was around uh, finding something that you can switch off from and actually how and how it can support your mental health. Because I think actually, personally, I think there's a lot of people who don't realise actually the impact that a, a hobby can actually have on someone and, and obviously on yourself as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, it's probably the first thing to go when you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed because you're like, I haven't got time to do this, so I'm just going to ditch it. Um, and he said ignore your creativity at your peril which to me is the same thing so whatever a hobby is it's, it doesn't matter if it's not creative on the tin but you're still creative to have a hobby and if you're not doing that it definitely has a detriment because you don't have any outlet you don't have anything that's kind of fun to switch off from work family home life etc and um, so crucial really yeah completely agree and everyone listen you're now hearing from an expert <laughs> there, there's just me who's just set the podcast up and know the impact that a hobby's had on myself. But actually now we have an expert in the room as well, which is even better. So, Naomi, why don't you let the audience know about your hobby? So my hobby is singing. Um, so singing on my own, singing in bands, singing in choirs, any singing in shows, any kind of singing, really. And that is something that I never knew until we started talking about it so singing and actually I love a sing song as well so we're not gonna we're not gonna do that on here don't worry I don't want to <laughs> you can sing on here that's fine but I'm not going to so talk to me when did all this start so really young so I started singing at primary school and actually it was my sister so my sister caught me singing in the bedroom and she kind of ran me down to my mom and she was like listen sing sing and I sang and she was like she's got something I was really young then about six or seven and I ended up getting my first kind of singing role at school in a little school play and I was the lead so I was Joseph in the Technicolor Dream Coat. Oh I love Joseph. Joseph yeah I love Joseph. Yeah. So that was my first kind of like I went from like singing at home in my bedroom and then doing that at school so that's kind of where it started and having singing lessons from a young age then. So as soon as they, so when did your actual lessons start? Did you actually, did you then pay uh, for extra lessons outside of school or a club or a like a, uh, an amateur dramatics group or a singing group or one of those sort of groups? So my lessons started at high school. So when I got to secondary school, there was someone within the school that would come in in school time and you could have, it, it was something they did at my school. So you would pay extra. So I had a singing lesson every week from probably the age of about 12 all the way up to just before GCSEs, because my school was really proactive in music and there was school concerts, so I sang in every school concert every year and got involved in it a lot at school. This is a real little hidden, hidden little <laughs> talent here, and it's this. I have so it's one of them when you find something out and you start unpicking it and find out the depths of it. So many other questions come up. And actually, what's scary at the moment, and this isn't a political statement, this is just a fact statement that actually children need to be creative in whatever form that is. 
And generally that starts at school. The problem now at the moment within the education system here, and I talk to teachers every day about these sort of things, is the fact that actually what they're trying to do is reduce that off the timetable. So actually, so we can then concentrate more on maths and English, which is, and sciences, which I get to a point, but children need to be creative. Yeah. They need to have, they need to have these outlets because actually these are things that make children, (laughs) pardon the pun, sing. This Mm -hmm. is what helps them be who they are. So in terms of, so obviously you, primary school, encouraged by the, you're encouraged by your class teacher at primary school, encouraged by Mm -hmm. your head teacher. Mm -hmm. How did that look? So yeah, I mean the yeah, so primary school you had to audition. <laughs> so it was really like professional considering it was primary school. She had to audition and then she chose who was gonna be Joseph. And then she was quite a I remember her, Miss Norris she was called at primary school and she was very good at leading us with her sticks and things. <laughs> so there's a proper name for it. <laughs> um, and yeah, she would play the piano and it was all very serious. And I've got, I've probably got, I've got it on videotape. Do you remember videotape? I've got it somewhere on VHS. So yeah, so she was very like making sure we were singing properly. Um, and then when I got to high school, my music teacher there, Mr. P, because his name was Mr. Pizanchez and no one could see it, say it. It was Mr. P for short, really took an interest in students who had a bit of talent. So he really helped us to have singing lessons, put on these school concerts. Of when I was 15, just a few covers. So he was very instrumental, I think, in pushing us towards, like, you've got something, let's yeah. go with that. And I wrote a song at school as well. So I didn't do the traditional route. So I never learned to read music. I do it all from sound. So I can't, I know, I understand some of the notes now, but I never did my grades. I never did classical training. I just did it all from sound. I've been in various choirs and things. But yeah, so people in your life don't realise how instrumental they can be in encouraging you to pursue something. Yeah, and I think that's really important. I think we all, everyone always says you can always remember a good teacher Mm. or a a good coach in in, in my world or just Mm. someone who has that impact. And there's a lot of time that people want to give up. And, I, and I've always said to with the coaches I work with or we employ or whoever they are, I said, you're never, realistically, you're never going to know that impact for another 10 years. Because yeah. actually just by putting that seed into with someone and helping them and encourage them to do, to follow something, then you never, mm-hmm. you know, you may not be able to, you may not see it, but actually down the line you may hear that they're now in they're in a band or they're doing this or they're on stage mm. or they're doing mm. whichever they want to do and actually that a lot of that comes down to you yeah you know you don't necessarily feel that at the time but it comes down that's who it will come down to so obviously mm. primary school high school talk to me about choirs outside of school when did you start in the yeah, choir so- Yeah, so I did, I suppose I did a bit more, because like in school I did drama as well, so drama is one of my hobbies too, Yeah. because the two go well together, so I did a lot of that. So yeah, so I did performing arts at college alongside psychology, and that performing arts was really heavy course, it was great, but you went off to London and you saw West End shows, you did directing, you did acting, you did singing, you did dance, so I loved it, it was absolutely brilliant, so I did a lot of that, and then after that I went off to uni, I started with drama and psychology, but I ended up dropping the drama, just did straight psychology degree. So yeah, so over the years, I've picked up amateur dramatics, I've been in choirs, I've been in concerts, I've done a bit of singing here and there. So now it's probably more singing at home. But even in the last few years, I've been in choirs in Lincolnshire, where I used to live. So yeah, I've tried to always keep it part of my life, even if it's just singing around the house. Yeah. Did you, in terms of, obviously in terms of when you've performed... Have you gone into? Have you gone to anywhere where you just thought, "Wow, I never thought I'd be performing here," any sort of either abroad or in the UK or any mm. sort of places like that? Oh yeah, massively. We had some really good opportunities even at school. So when I was fifteen, I sang at party in the park in our local area, like ten thousand people there, and we sang alongside some celebrities there. That was pretty mind blowing. That was amazing. I think Danny Minogue was there. Like, you know, the kind of really big celebrities at the time. Yeah. Sam Moore, who's a soul singer, was there. 
we got to sing alongside Sam Moore. So yeah, we, we had some really good opportunities, uh, even at school. And even like as an adult, I went into a recording studio. I've been into concerts. I never really went down the kind of the voice or X Factor or anything like that. I just kind of did local stuff and for local competitions and those kinds of things. So yeah, I've just always kind of kept it on my radar and really enjoyed it. What? So I know for a fact that when I... Music plays a massive part in a lot of people's lives. How does... Obviously, as well as part of your singing anyway, do you have certain go-to music, depending on what mood? Do you use music in the same way like that? That actually it's about, actually, if I'm in this sort of mood and I want to come out of that mood, I know that I can put that on and actually that will help me or dance around the house or whatever that looks like. Yeah, I have a real eclectic mix. (laughs) Um, And I find it really hard when people say to me, what's your favourite song or favourite artist? Because I just like so much. But my genre is kind of country and folk. That's the real kind of stuff I really like. And But then in my younger days, I love drum and bass. I love pop music, all sorts of, even some classical music I really like. I'll listen to Classic FM if I need to focus on a piece of work. So, yeah, it really depends what mood I'm in. But country and folk is always what lifts me up. There's a band called The Shires that I really like. So I listen to their music regularly. And a massive Taylor Swift fan from all the ages. But even like the beginning when she was country and folk, I was really into her then. And of course, now she's more pop, although she's re-released her first albums recently. But yeah, so uh, those kinds of, it's a real eclectic mix. It is, yeah. And I think, you know, I think when you're young, a lot of the music you hear is from parents and mm. things like that. And have they, did they, have they had an input into all of this? Have they supported in some of these ways? Oh, yeah. Like my parents were like my biggest cheerleaders. They were at all my concerts and all the gigs they would take me to and pick me up. And everything I did, they were supportive. Their kind of genre was more like Beatles, ABBA, you know, that kind of music, which I love and really got into as well. Pink Floyd and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, but I just love live music, even if I'm like walking past somewhere and I hear something, I'm like, oh, I want to go in there. I love jazz. You know, I'll just be wherever there's live music. I'm like, yeah, I want to listen to that just anything someone's singing or playing something I'm just so drawn to it my, like I don't use TikTok much because you use like you lose hours of your life but my feed is just full of singing people singing and people dancing because obviously it picks up on the al- algorithms of what you like oh and dogs <laughs> so that's all my feed is full of um, so, yeah so do- dogs yeah. and music, dogs and singing yeah yeah basically a- any of you singing on TikTok no <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I have not put myself out there like that. Um, I haven't sang on stage for a long time. So I did kind of choirs as I got older. I got into choir work and I did a bit of amdram as well when I was older. Uh, but like recently I've relocated. So I'm just trying to find out what there is locally. But at the moment I just sing at home and that still brings me lots of joy. I was going to say, so moving on to that, how, what does singing make you feel? How does singing make you feel? I would say just like free, um, happy. I don't think about anything else when I'm singing or listening to music. I think I've got a different brain. So like if I'm working, I can't listen to music because I will focus on that because I'll hear the lyrics and I'll hear the percussion or whatever it is in the background. So I have to have silence when I'm working because my music is actually time for me. So with music's on, that's my time to decompress, to really fill my soul with really good stuff. And is that with, so obviously you said sometimes if you need to focus, you'll have classical on. But is yeah. that, I suppose, so if you if there's words on the music and there's stuff that you can sing along to, then you know, actually you need to focus on the work. Yeah. Let's have the classical bit. Yeah. Let's have that bit done first and yeah. then we go from there. Yeah, exactly. And I even, like, I go, I've got the Calm app and I even go to sleep listening to, like, some sounds. <laughs> which helped me go to sleep. So music is a big part of my life. Yeah, and I think I, I do. I tend to listen to... I don't sleep a lot anyway, because, as I say, similar to yourself, business owners and other bits, I find it very hard to switch off. Mm. And, and having had sport in my whole life to help me as a hobby, I find music is music so important. And again, it's really funny when people go, yeah, what is your favourite music? Well, I don't know, whatever's on. I, I like to be able to sing along. Yeah, me too. 
you know, and it will be, and it will be around the house. It will be outgoing. But I always have, even my daughters now, I don't know if it's a good thing, but they now, have, well, certainly my youngest, she now has music playing when she goes to sleep. Mm. Just so there's some, some noise in the background. Yeah. You know, but she's like, oh, can I put music on? I can't really, the problem is, I can't, I do sometimes go, no, you just need to sleep. But they hear me do it. Yeah. And it all becomes learnt behaviour. Yeah, cool. You know, and it's, but again, I'll listen to meditation music. Yeah. I'll have sounds in the background. Not necessarily I'll have songs playing, but it'll always be yeah. sort of, they'll get a video off YouTube or meditation mm-hmm. music off that or something like that and just let yeah, it play. Exactly. And it's amazing how it works, isn't it? It does work. And we've also got a projector. So the projector is like the moon and the stars on the ceiling. And then this really calming music. And actually, we, me and my husband both struggle to get to sleep if that's not on. Really? Weird. And people always comment about when you chart your children having it on because they'll have mm. those sort of things as a kid, won't it? Mm. Yeah. I yeah, just, we love I just, it. I find it amazing how things work and how it then helps you calm down and then be able to drift off. Yep. To sleep as well. Yeah, so, it's yeah. to focus on so your day is finished. Yeah, no, I completely agree on that one. Uh, you were also talking about earlier, you said sort of, have you got any other hobbies that you're involved with that you like? Obviously, you were talking about drama and things like that. Yeah, what so, other yeah, sort I've of done, things do you do? I've done acting like all my life as well from a young age, all through my life. Done loads of Amdram when I moved, first moved to Lincolnshire a good way to meet people so I'd sign up to an amateur dramatic group meet new people and quickly got in some plays I was in two plays at the same time which was quite stressful <laughs> um, that's impressive that's impressive I tell you what it's very good I mean I enjoyed it but like one of them I had the lead role one of them I was a, just a smaller role so that was good and they were very different one was set in the war one was set in the 90s so very different so that was good but yeah and I, I just that was a really good way to meet people and be around other fellow thespians and just really enjoying acting. So acting is another thing. And then just things like, I like mindful colouring. I like walks with my dog. I just try and do a bit of self-care every day, journaling or meditation. I try and do something every day that allows me to switch off. How, and from in your professional world, how important is it for people to be able to switch off? Massively. So I think you like hobbies actually should or could form part of your self-care. So, you know, every day we get up, we do whatever it is we're doing, working, volunteering or being at home is also working with your family. So we don't have time to switch off and decompress the day. And that's when things can just roll over to the next day and the next day and the next day and then things feel really overwhelming. So having that space to decompress and just focus on something else, even if it's just 10 minutes, 15 minutes, doesn't have to be an hour just to take your mind somewhere else. It's a bit like giving your brain a wash in the same way that you brush your teeth. It gives your brain a wash before you start the next day. No, like, and as I say, this that's in your professional world. We do that. We talk about hobbies a lot just naturally because actually I think, and for me, anything can be a hobby, providing it has mm. a positive impact on you and enables you to have your own time. Mm. then actually anything really can be a hobby. Yeah, exactly. Totally agree. So, final question. If someone came up to you and went, I really don't think I've got a hobby, or, yeah, I'm not sure what a hobby is, I'm not sure I'm not sure if I've got one, what would you say to them? Like, try not to overthink it and just think about something you enjoy doing. And it could be like you enjoy food. So it could be that actually you like making a nice recipe or you like baking. It could be that you like languages. So you take up Duolingo, which is free. I think that app is free. So it could be something really small. It could be that you actually like knitting. It could be, you said you had crochet, I think, yeah. the other week. Yeah. It could be that you just like going for a walk. That That is a hobby in itself. It's anything that takes you out of your day-to-day. Don't overthink it. And even if it's only five minutes, it's better than nothing. Amazing. Naomi, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that obviously now people will come in and listen to it. And again, a hobby is for everyone. 
there is anything can be a hobby, but it is so important. And everyone, we've got an expert on in terms of how hobbies can support you. So take a listen, write notes down when you're listening to the podcast and go and get a hobby, have some fun with it, have some time with it. And I promise you, it will make you feel better. Promise you that. Even running around with other blokes playing rugby and hitting each other. You know what? It was a great way of getting out of your, getting mm. the uh, the day's energy out. Yeah, exactly. Te- you know, teamwork, being around other people, so important for everyone. But Naomi, yeah. thank you very much for your time. And I'll look to speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Th- thanks, everyone, for listening. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.